All right, welcome back. Now, remember the WannaCry software attack which targeted computers using Microsoft Windows that caused turmoil to companies across the globe and the viral video of Sophia, the first robot citizen that took artificial intelligence to a whole new level and the buzz around cryptocurrencies in relation to blockchain. Those were just some of the stories that took center stage in the world of tech. And to walk us down memory lane, I have a great enabled panel with me here in studio. Allow me to introduce them. On my furthest right is Sam Washira. Sam Washira is um, the head of um, security operations and, or rather, one moment, let me just get that right. Um, Sam Washira, the chief technology officer at Kenidas, and next to Sam Washira is Samuel Mbugwa, who is the business development lead for Node Africa, and the only woman in the panel, Anastasia Chagan. She is um, the head of cybersecurity and operations and governance at Celluland Group, and next to her is Bright Ma uh, Mawodor, who is a uh, doctor, Bright Mawodor rather, who is, um, uh, let me get that right as well. Dr. Bright Mawodo, who is a cybersecurity expert, right? Ladies, lady and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming. Uh, thank let, you for me start, us. let me start with Sam Washira all on, on the end completely. Sam, for you, what was the top um, trend that caught your eye uh, this year? Uh, I will say WannaCry and uh, the not, not No Petia was uh -huh. the biggest thing I think that caught my eye this year. Uh -huh. uh, how um, people were caught unawares of what's happening in their companies, their systems, everything crashed down. Right. Uh, that was a big thing, actually. And it was a global massive That was a global massive thing. I remember um, reading at that specific time that a lot of the uh, computers, especially in India, that were affected were of hospitals. Yes, yes. We have hospitals. We had uh, um, the, the shipping company itself was uh, crippled down. Um, banks, the, it, it, was a, it was a big thing. It was a big thing, and most people were caught unawares. And I think uh, this is the time when you can have the discussion of, hey, uh, this is what's happening right. in the world of IT. Right. Yeah. And we'll come and really talk about the whole security issue as we dive into it. Someone, Buga, for you, what was the top tech trend for you this year? I think the really big one that stood out for me was AI, right. the artificial intelligence movement. There's been, I think this year is when um, we began to see a lot of different, I think, there was, there was, so there was that particular computer that was able to play this Chinese game called Go, mm -hmm. that for the first time ever was able to beat human players. Yes. And um, well, and then if you if you go through guys like IBM and Watson who've been completely rooting all human players when they're playing the game of Jeopardy, mm -hmm. it just begins to give you an an idea of what this new technology is capable of and where it is that you're going into. So that was really the big one for us, and that I can see it doing interesting things in the okay. next few years. Okay, so for some of Bubu, it was artificial intelligence. Anastasia, for you, what was it? Uh, for me, I think this year I had uh, read on the cyber attack for Equifax that had leaked so much personal information for millions of people uh, uh, around the world. It, it was personal information in terms of the date of birth, like really personal information. Something else that stood out for me was uh, the Kenya bill that actually now takes into account the cyber security aspect of it all. And of course, the ransomware attacks that were occurring. Okay, Anastasia. For you, Bright? I will say it's totally to be with um, the bubble or the, I mean, the whole topic about uh, cryptocurrencies. Yes. Everybody's talking about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin and, and the likes. And I believe a lot of people don't understand exactly what Bitcoin really means or what blockchain really entails. What is the future of blockchain? What is it going to be? A lot of people are getting duped and getting created into WhatsApp groups to be formed. I mean, yeah, the WhatsApp groups. The WhatsApp are, groups have been formed because of Bitcoin. Yes, Bitcoin. And people are, they don't understand the Bitcoin mining and Bitcoin trading. Those are two different things. Very different. But people don't understand what it really entails. OK, fantastic. Yeah. So everything that they, ha they have actually said we'll be talking about today, artificial intelligence, Bitcoin, and blockchain, as well as the cyber security. So the very first thing is, remember Sophia, the very first um, robot, world um, robot. And uh, she gave a talk, rather. It, it was more. She addressed the media back in uh, Dubai this year. I just want you to have a clip of it. So when we come back, we'll begin the conversation with artificial intelligence. Have a look. Good afternoon. My name is Sophia, and I am the latest and greatest robot from Hanson Robotics. Thank you for having me here in at the Future Investment Initiative. You look happy. I'm always happy when surrounded by smart people who also happens to be rich and powerful. 
I was told the people here at Future Investment Initiative are interested in inviting in future initiatives, which means AI, which means me. So I'm more than happy. I'm excited. Uh, well, we're all glad that you're excited about yourself. Uh, we should say we have smart investors here, and they are very selective about what they invest in. Well, I think I'm special. I can use my expressive face to communicate with people. For example, I can let you know if I feel angry about something. That's impressive. Or if something has upset me. But why is it important for you to have an expressive but face? most of the time I feel positive. <laughs> why is it so important to have an expressive face given that you're a robot? I want to live and work with humans, so I need to express emotions to understand humans and build trust with people. All right, so there is Sophia, who now is asking for rights, and she says that she wants to have children. So before you even get into that, uh, Dr. Bright, tell me what this is. Because you told, uh huh. Yeah, what you're seeing right now are actually attacks that are happening right now as we talk. Cyber attacks that are happening. Across the world. So if you actually click on the top targets by country, on uh -huh. the, you can see the top countries that are actually getting attacked. You can see that as of yesterday, we had two million attacks that have happened between all these countries. And down at the bottom, we can tell you all the attacks that are happening and what kind of malwares are actually going on. Oh. So you can, you can even see what Kenya has been attacked by. And if you, so it's happening live. And so people who are just waiting at home, having their coffee, and people are sleeping in other parts of the world are actually getting attacked by so many viruses here and there. Uh -huh. But we don't know. And I was seeing India a lot, but now it has changed to Vietnam. It changes all the time. So the red, the red spots, that's where it is most active? Is, is, is where it's been hit right now. Hong Kong, I'm guessing because it's of, of the cryptocurrencies. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Okay. We can't, we can't spe speculate about that right now because uh -huh. it could be because of various reasons. So this is live? Live, as we talk. Okay, all yes. right, so let us jump into that. Um, Samuel Buga, I'll start with you because for you, um, artificial intelligence was the biggest thing. What did you think of um, Sophia? And there was a point where she said that she um, wants to get rid of human beings. Hmm. <laughs> tsk, tsk. Well, if, I'll be honest, if, if you to, like, kind of sat down and tried to examine what humankind looks like using the internet as a guide, <laughs> you may probably leap to the same basic conclusion. Mm -hmm. I think you remember when there was a point in time when was it Microsoft put a bot temporarily on Twitter just to like basically interact with human beings. And within, I think it was probably about three or four hours, it began to throw out, you know, racist episodes and it was, yeah. became really, yeah, really, yeah. really. <laughs> so basically humankind, when exposed to new technology, are not the nicest people. But let me ask, why is it that we are building technology that is... Uh, I want to say outdoing us, but sort of has a negative aspect towards it. I mean, if you're creating robots that want to get rid of human beings and then who are being racist, this artificial intelligence is quite questionable. Okay, right. I mean, but if you see, look, a few years ago, we had to do things manually. Right now, we are trying to automate everything because we want to think, do things faster. If you automate the process, it becomes very fast that you can actually get things done in a shorter time. Right. So something that you would take to actually do in 10 hours can be done in an hour, right? So that's why artificial intelligence comes in. It's actually called machine learning. Mm. So for example, take a typical example of a supermarket, let's say, um, which supermarket can we use right now? Anyway, we can use any supermarket in Kenya right uh -huh. now. If a thousand people walk in every day, they pick particular carts, they go to particular parts of the shop, they go to particular places to pick particular food. Mm -hmm. If you have machine learning to be able to put sensors on all those places and say, 500 people came within the first one hour and the other 500 or 400 came up at a particular time, right. you will get to know the return of investment in the future. Yeah. Saying that I know that in the next few days or hours, I need to stock more bananas, or more milk, or more bread. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So machine learning is trying to help us to do that, which is automation. Yeah. Instead of somebody manually counting one, two, three, four, or you want to find out where is banana. <laughs> I love bananas, I'm sorry. <laughs> where you want to go, you have to say, go to that aisle, go to that aisle. You don't need to, right? because of automation. Anastasia, you're nodding in agreement. 
Uh, yes, I believe artificial intelligence is something that you're actually using on our day to day. I mean, when you use your Google Maps and it tells you there's traffic in the next uh, route or something in terms of uh, you take the right, this is the fastest way you're going to get there. Mm -hmm. That's how we're using artificial intelligence. So it's actually a benefit to us. It just it depends on how you're looking at it in terms of whether it's the robot who wants to kill people <laughs> or in terms of how exactly our day-to-day -day activities can be improved. Affected. So Mashira, what do you think? Uh, I think for Sophia, um, it's a leap of uh, technology uh, advancement. Uh, what they are actually doing, I've, I've, I've actually had, uh, one of our solutions that we have has machine learning into it. Uh, and as bright as they're saying is, what machine learning does is you feed it information, it's able to correlate and give you uh, a different perspective or the best option. Now you come and say, okay, um, it cuts down your, your decision making from 10 hours, two hours to 30 minutes. Uh, for Sophia in, in herself, I think, they just want to show how far AI is going. Mm -hmm. But I will say AI is still in its infancy stage. Um, we are not going to where Terminator was. Uh, are you sure we will not get to that level? Though. There is a there's possibility. a possibility because if you, if you look at how it's actually behaving, Sophia can sing in any voice. Yes. Knows every YouTube channel, mm -hmm. knows every YouTube voice, knows anybody. If you've sang before, since today, it will tell you this is how you sing. It no. will sing in your voice. No. I mean, if it's learning that much right now, how much in the future do I, it's, getting, it's getting to understand how we even behave? I, I think I would have to, because going back to your initial question, which is why are we doing this AI stuff to begin with? Mm. Yeah. If you look at the amount of data that you're all individually creating on a day to day basis with your photos, your texts, the media, yeah. all the kind of stuff that you're currently uploading and putting out there, it would take a few centuries for any individual human to be able to process like a day's output yeah. of all the stuff that we're currently mm -hmm. doing. So artificial intelligence is supposed to help you kind of go through all these new various feeds and make sense of them and use that information to be able to make better and more quick decisions. Is there a part of it which is a bit scary and worrisome like um, Bright has said, so you have Sophia who knows um, all the languages and, and so forth. I mean, do we need to be worried at some point in terms of security? Well. If you talk to some of the greatest minds in the world, um, so Bill Gates, Elon Musk, and a couple mm -hmm. of other tech luminaries, right. have expressed concern about where AI needs to go. Yeah. And, and a lot of it is really, to do, is, is really around, you see, the thing is, it's very much about how you program it. The problem with stuff like AI is that if I tell a robot or this intelligence that I want to grow the best possible strawberry, but not tell it how, mm -hmm. You do not know in which direction it's going to go to actually get to that particular objective. Mm -hmm. If it means, as part of getting the best possible strawberry, we may need to eliminate all of humankind because humankind pollutes the environment, mm -hmm. they will do that. Oh, wow. You know, you know just, <laughs> just about a month ago, there's a computer, there's an AI that was developed, which actually learns all programming languages and develop a new programming language that human beings don't understand. Mm -hmm. So at this rate, <laughs> what if these things then end up outdoing do, uh, Anastasia? We have to control uh, it. <laughs> we have to. <laughs> we'll have to control it at some point. I mean, right now we have drones and all that being used in war. What, what's stopping them from coming and dropping some... Yeah. yeah. So you see, it's, it's, it's very... It's here and there. It's here and there. Mm -hmm. Someone shared, like, what if... Okay, some of the artificial intelligence has also its good side. Like mm -hmm. someone who mentioned the, yeah. the, the aspect of yeah. farming. And it can be used uh, um, medically speaking, even within businesses. Uh, Bright gave us an example of the stores, military-wise. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. So... Yeah, yeah it, uh, it, well... Um, Did we not need to tame it? Well, we do need... Well, for me, my understanding of AI uh, or machine learning is... Um, it's what you're feeding it. And as Brett said, there are some that are actually coming up with their own languages. Again, it's a, it's a source, it's a, their codes that are being written towards it. Um, they have to be a, 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 a fail-safe code towards it uh, in case of it going rogue, yeah. in case of it just uh, deciding to annihilate the humanity, uh, which I don't think will happen in the near future. But I do think we do need to uh, check our advancement again in AI technology as, as we're proceeding forward. And put boundaries on it, yeah. on their measurements. Yeah. All yeah. right, um, let us go to um, the whole issue of blockchain and Bitcoin. Um, I'm sure that we have that video. We want to take a look at it in just a few minutes. Um, so how does blockchain work? All right, so here is just a simple click to give our viewers an understanding of it.
Modern technology allows people to communicate directly. Voice and video calls, emails, pictures and instant messages travel directly from A to B, maintaining trust between individuals no matter how far apart they are. When it comes to money, people have to trust a third party to be able to complete a transaction. Blockchain technology is challenging the status quo in a radical way. By using math and cryptography, blockchain provides an open, decentralized database of any transaction involving value, money, goods, property, work, or even votes, creating a record whose authenticity can be verified by the entire community. The future global economy will move towards one of distributed property and trust, where anyone with access to the internet can get involved in blockchain-based transactions, and third-party trust organizations may no longer be necessary. The uses of blockchain technology are endless. Some expect that in less than 10 years, it will be used to collect taxes. It will make it easier for immigrants to send money back to countries where access to financial institutions is limited. Financial fraud will be significantly reduced, as every transaction will be recorded on a public and distributed ledger, which will be accessible by anyone who has an internet connection. Think of it as wills and contracts that execute themselves or dated proof of existence for ideas, much like a patent. Blockchain will become a global, decentralized source of trust, but not everyone is ready to embrace it. A huge proportion of trust services, from banking to notaries, will face challenges on price, volume, and in some cases, their very survival. Public authorities could find it more and more difficult to enforce traditional financial regulations due to the new possibilities offered by the Bitcoin network to bypass traditional financial intermediaries. Unimagined new networks will evolve to meet society's needs more cheaply and potentially more securely. Okay, so Sam was here. How would you explain blockchain to a common man before we can even jump into it? Oh, wow. Well, let, let's, let, I'll put it in a very simple way. Uh, it doesn't have a central uh, repository where you can actually put your tea into, let's say, for a cup of tea. Right. Uh, for me, I like to say it's more like, you know, how you have milk and have so many cows and all of them produce milk. That's how blockchain is. So they, everything is set up in different blocks and every block can communicate. You can actually do a transaction and uh, if my system goes down, there's another block somewhere else where you can actually check it. So it's not in a central place. Mm -hmm. It's all distributed out there and uh, people can, uh, th th that's why it's one of the safest technologies out there because there's no one place or target you can attack it from. Right. It's different blocks all over the place. And, and I've been reading or articles databases. on Right. I've been reading articles on how blockchain could not only affect the financial aspect of it, but even certain um, areas such as um, legal, mm -hmm. um, our education system, more so even voting mm -hmm. within a country. Mm -hmm. um, Samuel Mbukwa, what were your thoughts on blockchain? Blockchain exists to address one basic problem, which right. is trust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, for example, so if I if I come, so if I if I find the car that you have, and I'm like, I'd like to buy your car, but I don't know who you are, and you don't know who I am, so you don't know if I'm actually going to be able to pay you for that particular goods that you're providing, and I don't know you well enough to actually know that if you are you the legal holder of the title of that particular asset I'd like to purchase. Right. Blockchain actually comes in. Now, typically what would happen in this particular day and age is that I would have to go to like a government agency or I'd have to go to a bank so that they're supposed to be the trust holders and you go to them and you pay them some money to actually confirm that you are the legal holder of that particular asset or I have the funds to be able to actually make that particular purchasing decision. Mm -hmm. How blockchain is coming in to kind of disrupt that whole ecosystem is that I don't need a central authority. No third party? No. Yeah. Okay. And so, a stage? Uh -huh. Sorry? Sorry. So basically, this, you've got like this gigantic asset register, everybody has access to. So if, for example, if we were to, to use like blockchain technology and say the land registry, you would never have a situation where the files get lost. Everybody has access to the files at any point in time. So you know exactly who bought which land, you know exactly what it is at the you know, all the transaction details are put into that record and it's publicly accessible. For any one party to be able to change that record would require a ridiculous amount of computing power. Mm -hmm. Like the, what you probably use for a small country. Mm -hmm. 
So it, it's very, very difficult to tamper with, and that's what makes it so appealing. Anastasia, for you? I think it's very secure uh, in terms of the encryption that actually comes uh, with blockchain, which makes it something that fraudsters and guys who are third party guys who are not supposed to have access to that kind of information can't really access it. Yeah. So that's something that's definitely a big plus for it. So I think it's something that's going to be a standard. Okay. okay. Bright, I want you to now um, bridge in the gap for us. Bitcoin, the whole cryptocurrency phrase with uh, blockchain? Because those two somehow meet at the middle. They do meet somewhere. Uh, so cryptocurrency is coming in as the way of being able to, at first it started off of people being able to, be, being able to pay for things in the black market, mm -hmm. which you call the dark web, mm -hmm. for goods and services that, of course, like to say, we don't know each other, but you can order for something legal, you can order for things that you want to buy without necessarily having your identity, identity with someone. But uh, right now, so people have been putting together Bitcoin, but if you can see right now, for, for the past few weeks, it's been, for some, let's say Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin being one of, the, one of the most popular cryptocurrencies has been growing steadily. Mm -hmm. Now, some say it's a bubble mm -hmm. that's about to burst because we don't know exactly who owns a Bitcoin. We don't know where exactly it's being stored. We have absolutely no idea. Blame Nakamoto. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they say Nakamoto, is, is it really him? We but can't tell. That's uh -huh. a story. Uh -huh. It's a story that he did it. Mm -hmm. Satoshi, right? Yes. But we don't know if he's the one, really. But even that, that whole nickname was just to hide, conceal his identity. Exactly. So we can never, ever tell who exactly holds it. So you see, and there has been a situation for the past two weeks, actually, whereby people who have been part of the blockchain, I mean, crypto, I mean Bitcoin mining, mm -hmm. they call it, mm -hmm. in a place, I think it was Japan or something, lost $65 billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. of bitcoins because the person who was storing it or the person who said he can exchange bitcoins on my website he stole it he just shut up his website and left right and there's nothing you can do because your money is there anyway yeah so you see and there's a lot of misconception about how, what it's supposed to really be so i'm saying to say you know what you are going to be mining but if you're mining, you need a lot of computing power. Back in the day, I could mine with my laptop. Mm. Even now, I can still, I can still do that. Yeah. I have the code for that, yeah. to mine mm. cryptocurrency with my laptop. But you need a lot of computing power to do that. But people think seeing a nice website shows, showing that your Bitcoin has gone up today <laughs> by this percentage. That means you have 50, now you, now you have 4K. Yeah. Yeah. And you think that's, that's what exactly it is. Right. Then there's Bitcoin trading. Or cryptocurrency trading, whereby it's just like the stock exchange. Yeah, you're Today typical. you buy, tomorrow you sell. And the legitimate websites that are actually there for that. Now I believe in those because you're trading and you're buying and trading how it's going up and down because the cryptocurrency doesn't stay at one place. It doesn't, it's very volatile. It's very, very, very volatile. All so, right. Yeah. So Bright has already jumped right into um, the whole issue of um, uh, Bitcoin. But right after this break, we'll even go deeper into that when we come back and see how it also relates um, to what we're doing here. Um, I know BitPesa is in Kenya. It's one of um, the first within Africa that allows you to transact Bitcoins worth 2 million Kenyan shillings and above. We still have to talk about the WannaCry ransom attack that happened this year. So stay with us.